Howdy, folks. Holly Rush again. I know you're glad to hear from me because I am glad to be able to talk to you again. Wasn't gone long, but I missed talking to you anyway. I hope you don't mind. But anyway, let's talk a little while. And let's talk about this subject. Visions, imaginations, and reality. Which is what and what is which. The hows of it all. Visions, imaginations, and reality. Which is what and what is which. The hows of it all. Okay. There seems to be 12 dimensions of wellness. We got self responsibility, love, breathing, sensing, eating, moving, feeling, thinking, playing, working. Communicating, intimacy, finding meaning, and transcendent, transcending. Now, a vision is a mental picture of the future you desire. The embodiment of hope and dreams in a particular area. A picture of what has not yet happened, but what the future may hold. Imagination, let's talk about that a minute. The ability to produce and simulate novel objects, people and ideas in the mind without any immediate input of the senses. A cognitive process used in mental functioning and sometimes used in conjunction with psychological imagery and the last one is reality which is a state of being the totality of real things and events unnecessary or necessary existence okay now let's talk about spiritual wellness here for a minute look deep inside yourself Sometimes we find a total stranger inside of us, one that we know very little about, connecting with yourself. When this connection is made, we find that we are better able to deal with life itself. The world around us contains the aspects of life that we've somehow overlooked. When we recognize this, we find this world opens up new ideas new aspects of living and difficult problems become stepping stones to improvement of self and problems become minor stumbling blocks easily stepped over. When we use the process of thought with positivity as main, main ingredients, life is worth living. Let's try meditating and mind clearing adventures while mentally tracking or trekking through past and present so that future becomes a better place to look forward to. Get out, do something meaningful. Travel, go places, see the countryside, breathe in the fresh air. Let it stimulate the spirit man inside you. Find your place in this world. For the first time in your life, let the joys of living touch the heart in you. It's sad that a virus would bring to the forefront of our life the importance of things which should have been life's most valuable. Give your spirit wings to fly, and when it does, take notice of your surroundings. Never, ever forget the order in your life, which is what comes first. There is a perspective in your life. When it is avoided or ignored, things fall apart. Life's meaning deteriorates and importance becomes nothing. Seek to elevate the spiritual aspects of your life and you can recognize value and find the objectives needed for success. I can't 
is thrown out the window and can is always the one true quality. And I mean positive quality this pandemic brings to existence. That it shines light on who and what we really are. Can we stand tall in his midst or cowardly cower down to the negative problems it forces upon us? Don't die on the inside before this virus kills you. Let nothing negatively control you mentally. Let the spirit stand in you and become what the spirit makes you. A fighter in spite of death looking you in the face. Life is worth living and like sank a coffee, sometimes it's good to the last drop. It's like a mind being twisted from now to never and wishing you could bring life back. So we toil within and accept the visionary aspects of truth. We know they are not there, but what's the harm in a grown up toying with a little imagination now and then? If it make one, makes one feel better and better enables them to deal with a desperate situation, which is or which was more real? What makes reality for one who has great loss? And how would you deal with the same situation if one feels better by activating his imagination? Who am I or you for that matter to insist his hold on this life must not include imaginary episodes? Sometimes visualizing a condition or reality makes difficult a simple reality. Now reality, is it necessary for one to access the totality of real, to embrace sanity? What is sane to some could be normal to someone else. What makes existence necessary? Why is it so necessary for one to dream of what could be real if it makes them happy or satisfied? What is the better way to accept loss? Is it living up to loss itself or imagining you did not lose anything at all? Which reality of the problem must one wake up to first? Living with the loss or imagining you didn't lose a thing? And that thing, things are still the same. Is it better to wake up slowly or abruptly? Each of us must face reality in his own way. But sooner or later, we must all wake up. Trust God to live. There is no problem in life we face that God cannot hold or help us solve. He knows addition that we would not think is normal or is flat out wrong. It just doesn't add up. 2 plus 2 equal 2, or 5 plus 5 is 6. Wow. Only God knows the real answer to life's problems. Whatever the answer. Striving with it when God knows already does not bode well for anyone. Let's go. Let go and let God. Who knows? He may have already worked it out. Well, that one wasn't exactly short, and I hope you understood what I was ranting and raving about. Glad to be with you again, and I hope I'll be even happier to see you next time. Over and out.